Hi, I'm Dave Vickers and welcome to The Photo Show. In today's episode, we're going to have a look at setting up your camera to start shooting video on it. Now, I just want to say before we start that I'm not a videographer. I shoot videos for YouTube, but my main skill set is as a stills photographer. So this is going to be a basic run through of some of the settings and some of the rules that apply to shooting video on a DSLR. If you're looking for more information and want to take the subject further, I suggest checking out YouTube channels like the DSLR Guide with Simon Cade, who makes some great videos on getting started and filming with a DSLR camera. Remember, if you like what you see on the photo show, please comment, like and subscribe in the boxes below. Let's have a look at setting up your camera so you can shoot some great video. Right, so one of the first things you're going to want to do before you start shooting video is actually setting up the camera so that it can record video in the way that you want it to record. So let's start by having a look at the basic settings on the camera. This is a Nikon D7100. It'll be exactly the same on the D7200 and a lot of the Nikon range. And a lot of these things will carry over to other camera manufacturers as well. They'll have different names for the different um, settings, but a lot of the settings will be very similar. So I'm going to open up the menu on the camera. And what we need to do is to come down to the shooting menu, which is the little camera icon second down. And if we come across into here, we, we've got two choices because it's right at the bottom. You can either scroll all the way down through the menu like this. And you can see right at the bottom here, we have movie settings. But an easier way is to push the button at the top and that will take you to the bottom of the list. And there we where we have movie settings. So this is where we want to start setting our camera up so we can get round to recording video with it. So we're going to press OK. And as you can see here, we've now got four options within the movie settings. We have frame size, frame rate, movie quality, microphone and destination. So let's start with frame size and frame rate. Let's click into that menu. And you can see now we've got different options for the frame size and frame rate within the camera. Coming down to the bottom here, we have 1280 by 720. Now this is not full HD. It's what they used to call HD ready or you know just standard HD. So it's a it's a high definition size, but it's not full HD. And you can see here we've got two options with this. We've got 50p, which is 50 frames per second, and 60p, which is 60 frames per second. And this refers to how many images are recorded for the video within one second of time. So 50 frames per second, 50 frames will be recorded for one second of time, 60 frames per second, 60 frames will be recorded for one second of time. Now these are quite fast frame rates, but the idea with the 50 and the 60 frames per second is that you could shoot slow motion action with it. You'd actually record at say 60 frames per second. When you bring the footage into an editing program, you could output it at 30 frames per second, which is effectively half, and that would slow the video down by half. It would be half as fast as it was actually shot. So you could record some slow motion images using those two options. So just want to take a quick second just to explain what we mean when we talk about frame rate. Frame rate is the number of images that are recorded per second. You probably did something like this when you were at school which was drew little stick men on the corner of your exercise book. So each one of these little stick men is an individual frame. And when they're played together, they create a moving image. And that's exactly what we're talking about in frame rate. So each of those frames, so 24 frames per second or 30 frames per second, when they're flowed together, create a moving image, which creates your video. Coming up now, we're into the full HD. So it's 920 pixels by 1080 pixels, which is a, the full HD size. And now we've got three options. We've got 24 frames per second, 25 frames per second, and 30 frames per second. And this is really a personal choice. It really depends on what your, your output video wants to look like. 30 frames per second is a very realistic video looking image, much like you'd see on news footage or documentaries. They're normally shot at something like 30 frames per, uh, per second. Whereas 25 and 24 frames per second are much more cinematic. They're a, a slower frame rate, which gives a slightly smoother looking image, uh, much more like you'd see in a, in a movie rather than on a, a, a TV documentary or news program. So it's personal preference. I personally like to shoot at 24 frames per second because I quite like that cinematic kind of look. So I'm gonna leave it at 920 by 1080 pixels at 24 frames per second. So I'm gonna click OK and come back out of that. Next option down we have here is movie quality. So let's come into that option. 
And here we've got two options here. We've got high quality or normal quality. Now, I take it if you're using a DSLR for video shooting, you're, going, you're using it because you want to try and get the highest quality that you can. Uh, these are great at shooting high quality video. So I would leave it on high quality and not normal quality. Obviously, it's going to affect the file size. But if you're shooting on a DSLR for video, you're going to want the highest quality. So I would leave that on high quality. Next option down is your microphone. And the, the camera has a built-in microphone on the top here just by the hot shoe. And that's for recording audio with the video you're, you're making. Audio on these, on these cameras isn't the best. And I tend to use an external microphone and then uh, add the, the sound in later. You can also plug a microphone directly into the camera via sockets on the side here. If you pull the little flap at the side here open, we've got a socket there that will take an external microphone to record directly onto the camera. But for now, we're looking at it, just setting the microphone up that is on board with the camera. So we have microphone, let's go into that, and we have a couple of options here. We have auto sensitivity, and that's going to allow the camera to dictate how much the audio level is set. And you can see here from the levels that are here, if I start to speak a little louder, it's coming up into the red and that's the, you don't want that. You want to avoid the, the microphone sensitivity going into the red because that's going to cause clipping and odd noises in your audio. Come down, you've got manual sensitivity. So here, if we come into this, you've got options for setting the sensitivity of the audio. If I start to bring this number down with the dial here, let's bring it down to about three. You can see when I'm speaking that it's actually barely registering on the meter at all. As I start to bring the sensitivity up, the more I'm speaking, the more the audio level is recording. And if I take it up further, you can see now that that's obviously too high because it's in the red all the time. So I'm going to bring that back down and I'm going to leave the audio sensitivity around 12 on the camera. So as I'm speaking there, even if I raise my voice and get louder, la 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 la, it's not hitting the red. So we're, we're, we're getting a a nice balanced sound and the, the recording audio will be of good quality and you won't be getting clicks and clipping and stuff like that. So we click OK there. And the last part in this section is destination. And this is where you get to choose which card you uh, save the video files to. On the D7100 and the D7200, there are two SD cards here and you can actually choose which one saves the, your video files to. Now I've set mine to save to slot two. So if I shoot still images, they will save to slot one on the card in there. And if I save, if I shoot video uh, footage, that saves to card two. So I know which card the video footage is going to be on. And you can see I've got a bigger card in slot two. So at the moment, slot two would allow me with the settings that I've already set up, two hours, 46 minutes and 28 seconds of recording time. Uh, on you know, on that particular card. If I chose slot one, which is a smaller card, that would just give me one hour, 23 minutes and two seconds. So that's the basic setup. Uh, let's have a look at when you actually start filming and how you set up your shutter speed and aperture and all those kind of settings as well. So now we've looked at the basic settings that you do within the camera. Let's have a look at actually setting up to film something. So the first thing you're going to want to do is to put your camera into manual mode. So we're clicking the, the dial at the top and we're putting the camera into manual mode so we can start filming video. The next thing here is we've got the live view switch. And you've got the two options here, live view for still shooting and live view for video shooting. So we're going to switch the lever across. So we're in live view for video shooting. And the next thing we do is we press the live view button, the LV button here on the back. So we push that. You hear the shutter open up and there you go. Now we've got the video image on the screen there and you can see that the uh, audio meter is recording my voice as we're picking up there. So what have we got settings wise here? Now for a start, let's start with shutter speed. Now shutter speed when you're recording video is quite an interesting process because there's a, a rule of thumb when we're recording video that your shutter speed should be double your frame rate. So for example, if you were shooting at 30 frames per second, you would need your shutter speed to be a 60th of a second. 
which is double the, the frame rate that your uh, video is recording at. So as we were saying earlier, I've actually set this up to be shooting at 24 frames per second. So I need to adjust my shutter speed first off to be as close to that. And there isn't a 48 uh, on the shutter speed. So the closest we're going to get here is 50. So I'm going to use the dial on the back here to dial back down to be 1 50th of a second. Okay, so I, I've now set my shutter speed to be 1 50th of a second. So the next thing we want to look at here is our aperture, our F number. And again, with video, what we're looking here for here is to uh, you know, give the look that you want to your video. Do you want a shallow depth of field to the video or do you want a deep depth of field to the video? So let's have a look at shut it, setting the um, aperture up. The one downside with uh, the D7100 and the D7200 is you cannot adjust the aperture while the camera is in live view. So you can see at the moment, I've got the aperture set at f4.5. So let's say I want a shallower depth of field. I want this I want this to maximize what we can do with the lens. So we're going to set the aperture at f2.8. So unfortunately, I'm going to have to take the camera out of live view and adjust the aperture on the top using the front dial down to 2.8. So now I've adjusted that, I'm going to put the camera back into live view. And we can see now that we now have the shutter speed set at 1 50th of a second and our aperture set at f2.8 to give a nice shallow depth of field. So really, they're quite limiting factors here. You, you, you're going, your shutter speed is going to have to be double your frame rate. So that, that's tying you in there to either 50 frames per second or 60 frames per second, depending on which frame rate you're shooting at. Your aperture is going to be set to the way you would like your image to look, whether you want a deep depth of field or a shallow depth of field. So the only option you're left with now, as far as adjusting the um, exposure of the image, is to adjust your ISO. Now at the moment, this is uh, uh, on ISO uh, 160. So let's have a look at what happens when we change that. So we're gonna, if, if we hold the ISO button on the back here, which is also the minus button for the um, magnification, Let's press that down there and you can see as I press that the color changes on the ISO to indicate that we can change it. It goes from white to yellow. So now using the back dial while holding that in I can now adjust the ISO on the camera. As you can see as I come up the image is getting brighter and obviously that's overexposed. So let's come back down so we, we've got an exposure that we're happy with. Okay, so I think I, um, ISO 160 is giving us a nice balanced look to this image. So that's basically what we've set up for this shot. Uh, obviously, depending on what you want to do, let's say, for example, you wanted a deeper depth of field. So let's take it off of live view, which I do find annoying. I do, I gotta admit, I do find that to be annoying. Let's bring the uh, aperture right up to F8, come back into live view, and you can see now, that the image is underexposed and we, the, the only option now that we have to adjust this if that's the aperture we want to use is to adjust the the ISO so again hold the ISO button in and if we raise the ISO up you can see it's starting to change there and at around ISO 640 now we're getting a similar image to what we were before so I'm going to go back to 2.8 and we'll move on to looking at focusing your image. Right, so now we want to, now we've got the, the uh, exposure set up on the camera, we're going to want to focus our image on a certain point. And when you're in live view here, you can see we've got the red square here, which is picking where our focusing point will be. So let's say we want to focus on the white flower on the end. I believe it's a lily. So using the dial on the back here, I've now moved the focusing square to be on the white flower there. And I'm going to half push my shutter 
so that it now focuses on that. And you can see now that's gone green and the point of focus now is on the, the white lily there. If we bring the focusing square across and bring it to this rose here, you can see now, now the focus point is on the rose there. So that's how you pick your focusing point and that's where you're gonna choose where you want your focus to be. What I would suggest now with video is that once you've picked your focusing point, is to now take the camera off of autofocus and put it into manual focus. So now that your focus is locked and it's not gonna be constantly moving and making your video look untidy by the fact that it keeps refocusing. Really with video, you wanna be you know setting up your shot, setting up your focus point, recording that part. If you wanna change focus points, stop recording, change focus points, start recording again because you don't want that in and out of focus look on your video. That's not gonna do anyone any good. So that's basically it. So now we've set our shutter speed, which is to be double our uh, frame rate. We've set our aperture to give us the depth of field that we're looking for in our image. And we've set our ISO to give us the balance of the exposure that we're looking for. Another thing you can do here once you're in live view is if you press the I button at the bottom here, this will show you all of the settings that you have set up for your video shooting. So let's go through these at the top here. So at the top here, it's DX. So that's showing the image area. That's showing that this is using the full size of the APS-C sensor um, to record the image. If we press OK, we've got the option here to use the, the crop factor, which is 1.3 crop. If we press OK on that now, the image will now close in and that's working with the crop factor there. And as I was saying earlier on, once you're in the crop factor, that will open up other images. If we come down now here to our um, frame, frame size and frame rate, which remember earlier I said at 1080p at 24 frames per second. So if I press OK there, you can now see that we have the options to go up to the 1080 at 50 frames per second and 1080 at 60 frames per second only because we've put the camera into the crop mode so if, if that's something you want to use it can be used within the crop mode of the camera so let's come back down press ok and i'm going to bring that back to our dx setting there and you'll see now once i go back to the dx setting the image will widen out again back to where we were originally so there we are next one down is set picture control now again this is another thing on the video which is a very personal choice at the moment you can see this is set on standard let's go into the the menus here and this is basically giving you a uh, picture contr uh, control over certain areas of how the image looks whether it's uh if i move across in the in the standard there it's giving you all of the different uh options there whether uh, the, the brightness of the image the saturation of the image the rgb state of the image and you can see on the standard setting that's all fairly normal there so if you watch now as i come down to the next setting which is a neutral setting i hopefully this will show properly on the on the uh camera here that it's actually changing from quite a saturated image to quite a, a flattened out image on the neutral settings let's go into that you can see that a lot of the, the contrast and the brightness and the uh, saturation is much further down, down the scale to flatten it out. And this allows you in post-production to do some color grading and to have a bit more um, room to move when you're adjusting the image to get it looking the way you want it. I like to shoot on the neutral settings because it allows me in post-production to adjust the contrast, to adjust the saturation of the image itself. Coming down again, next you have Vivid, and you can see there that that's really punched the colors through. And if we go into that, you can see that it's moved up a lot of the um, settings there from the standard and the neutral. Next one down is Monochrome. So this will shoot purely in black and white. Again, you know, this is something I'd recommend doing in post-production. I would shoot in one of the color settings and adjust it the, uh, to a monochrome within the editing suite. 
That way you've got both choices. If you film it in monochrome here, it will be purely a monochrome image when it's uh, outputted. Next, we have portrait, which again, like in the camera settings, will um, you know, give a nice saturation for skin tones. And lastly, we have landscape, which again will saturate the colors so that you can have different uh, vibrancy within your, your footage. But I like to set it on neutral. But again, you know, it's, a, it's entirely a, 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 your choice. Standard will give a, a really nice looking video. Neutral will give you a flatter looking image that you can work with in post-production. So we'll click OK there. Coming down now, next option here you have is monitor brightness. And this will obviously, as the name suggests, brighten your monitor up or darken your monitor down. It won't have an effect on the finished video image, but it will, you know, if you're in bright sunshine and you need the monitor to be a little bit brighter because you can't see it, you can adjust it there so you can see that. Next one down is giving us our frame rates and frame sizes. As we were saying earlier on, um, you've got the different options here. I'm shooting it at 1080 by 1920 at 24 frames per second. Next one down is the movie quality. We were looking at that earlier on. You've got the option there of shooting high or normal. That's in high. And next one down, you have the microphone sensitivity. And as you can see there, we've got the microphone riding there, showing us what our microphone sensitivity is. And you can up it that way to get a stronger signal or bring it down that way to get a lower signal. And finally is the destination. That's the way which card the files are being saved to. So that's with the I button there. So we push the I button back and we're now back to our standard settings. The other options you've got when you're shooting video is the using the info button at the bottom here. Uh, if you standard, you would have it set up like this. We have all the information on the settings of the camera around the outside, plus your audio levels marking there. If you press the info button there, that'll firstly that'll take all of the information away secondly that will put up a uh, grid so you can uh, use it for composition to your rule of thirds giving you a, a composition grid press it again and you've got a level so that you can tell if your camera is, is level and true and push it again and we're back to this the standard view there so now we have our shot set up we've got our uh, shutter speed set at twice the frame rate that we're shooting at. We've set the aperture we want uh, to give the look of the video we're trying to shoot. And we've set the ISO to help set our exposure. The only thing now we need to do is to start recording. So to start recording, you press the little button on the top of the camera with the little red dot on it next to the on off switch. And when you push that, you can see now that we have a flashing red symbol at the top here indicating that we're recording. And we've also got a countdown timer here, which is telling you how much time you can record video for. Um, one of the downsides of shooting on a DSLR is that you have a limited recording time. On this camera, it will record for 20 minutes before you'll have to stop the camera and start recording again. But that's it. Push the button on the top, start recording, record your footage. When you want to stop recording your footage, press the button again. And there we've stopped the recording of the video. So that's a basic rundown of the settings and some of the rules you need to know for shooting video on a DSLR. I'm just going to finish this off by saying I think there are pros and cons to filming video on a DSLR. On the pro side, you're getting really great image quality. The, the images you get off the sensor for video are top notch. And the fact that you can use the lenses you already have with the camera gives you a really great range of different shot types that you can do. If you've got nice uh, wide aperture lenses, you can get, shoot stuff with a shallow depth of field and get really creative with your video work. On the downside, I don't feel that the uh, ergonomics of a DSLR lend themselves very well to video shooting. Compared to a, you know, a professional video camera, the way you hold a stills camera is very different. And to, to get good video with a DSLR, you really need to be putting it on a, a stand or a tripod or something to get a solid image out of it. The other problem I find with shooting with a DSLR is you're going to have a limited um, shooting time. Because of a weird thing with the tax laws with, in Europe and the United States, cameras are either taxed as a video camera or a stills camera. 
And for your DSLR to be taxed as a stills camera, they have to limit the amount of time it can recall for in video. So for example, on Nikon cameras, it's about 20 plus minutes. And on Canon cameras, I think they go up to about 30 minutes recording time. So you can only record that length of time in one file. After 20 minutes of recording time, you're gonna to have to stop the recording and start a fresh recording file because of the tax laws in each country. But let me know in the comments below, do you shoot video with your DSLR? Are, and you know, are you happy to work around the limitations that it has over the image quality that you're gonna get? So I'm gonna leave it there. Um, I'm Dave Vickers, this is The Photo Show. Thanks for watching, see you next time.